inductive reasoning, deductive reasoning and abductive reasoning are three different ways of looking at various problems. But what is the difference between each of them? Well, in inductive reasoning, you're not actually certain of the answer to a problem, but are trying to get the best answer, or the most likely one, given the limited information available. It's a case of applying what you know about one case, and applying it to a similar one, and hoping you haven't overlooked anything. An example might be that, looking at our solar system, there are four rocky planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, which are all close to the star, but further out, of four gas planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. Using inductive reasoning would mean you'd expect to see smaller rocky planets in close orbit round another star and larger gas planets orbiting further out. However, just because you expect to see it doesn't mean it must be the case. It's just that given the limited information, it's what you'd expect to see. For instance, in this case you may have overlooked the rocky bodies in the asteroid belt and the Oort cloud indicate rocky planets had the potential to form further out from our Sun, and may have done so round other stars. With this type of reason, there are also some rather large biases which come into play, including confirmation bias, which could be called wishful thinking, where the evidence is selected to support what the person is trying to prove. For example, one could be trying to prove that rocky planets close to another star may support life, and therefore you find the evidence to support that. Then we have deductive reasoning, or top-down logic, where you follow the reasoning from one or more statements to follow them to its logical conclusion. So, if a rocky planet is needed to support advanced life, and a planet with liquid water is needed to support advanced life, deductive reasoning will say that you need a rocky planet with liquid water to support advanced life. However, deductive reasoning relies upon the statements to be accurate, so that the conclusion is accurate. For instance, it's possible to have life on a planet without liquid water, and the conclusion is inaccurate that liquid water and a rocky planet are needed for life. But, just because one of the supporting statements isn't accurate, doesn't mean that the conclusion isn't. In this case, if the statement about water is inaccurate, it doesn't mean that a rocky planet with liquid water won't be the only place to find life. It's just that this argument can still be the case as a valid possibility it just it doesn't have any sound scientific basis on which to substantiate the statement. Many mathematical proofs rely upon deductive reasoning, but a careful examination must be made of the statements that are being used so they're not fundamentally flawed. This has been the basis for many flawed theories from eugenics to intelligent design. Finally, we have abductive reasoning, which is where one most people use all of the time without actually realising it. It forms the basis of many scientific theories. It's where you can come to a possibility or a range of possibilities to a problem by eliminating those possibilities which are highly unlikely, just leaving you with the more likely ones. They can also commonly refer to as an educated guess. So for instance, you might say that life is highly unlikely to evolve on a planet which has a temperature of over 100 degrees centigrade because it'd just be too hot or a planet that was permanently frozen because it would just be too cold. You could also conclude that because water is a perfect medium for chemical reactions to take place, that water would be needed for life to develop. You could also conclude that without a rocky planet with a strong magnetic field that's able to deflect the more dangerous um, rays of a star's energy, life would be extremely difficult to develop. So by using abductive reasoning, you've concluded that best guess for a planet supporting life would be a rocky one with liquid water on it. However, abductive reasoning gives only a good basis for further investigation. It doesn't actually prove anything on its own, and quite often it can be wrong. So there we have inductive, deductive and abductive reasoning, and some of the pitfalls you can encounter when using them.